Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Creatives. Today, I invite a new friend, Nicole Yazzolino. Uh, Nicole is a singer, singer, uh, singer songwriter, producer, vocalist, um, and is coming to us from Germany. Today is our first uh, mystery basket audience choice um, ingredients episode. I'm super excited about it. The, we just got our ingredients today. Um, super late last night, early in the morning. I didn't see it until this morning. Um, and our ingredients are popcorn, kale, and soba noodles, which is super exciting. It was a lot of fun uh, trying to devise what I'm gonna make for this. Um, Nicole, what are you making today? Okay, so today what I'm gonna do is I am making some sesame oil, like basic soba noodles. Um, I'm going to do a popcorn, seaweed, and curry encrusted salmon. And with the kale, then I'm going to do a red curry kale kind of like saute. And I'll put it all on top of the sesame soba noodles. And I will probably be including um, some kind of fun ingredients like um, Turkish fish spices and um, this really nice uh, pomegranate syrup that I have uh, for a little extra cake. That sounds so delicious. Um, I, I'm also doing something similar with the popcorn. Um, I'm making a Parmesan popcorn encrusted chicken um, on a kale pesto soba noodle. Um, but I'm gonna add a, some green onions and some sesame seeds to just make it a, seem a little bit more soba noodle-y. So I'm super excited to kind of try out some of these, these different things. Um, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Actually, I really invite you, take this challenge, um, make some uh, popcorn, kale, and soba noodle dishes, and let me know what, what you end up making, um, what you would end up doing. Um, I've already told one person, and I know they they were like, they mentioned what they were gonna be, what they would have made, and it was totally different than what we were doing, which which is what I love. Really? So, um, I, think, uh, I hope you enjoy the episode. As I'm making my breadcrumb mixture, I just want to hear a little bit more about this process that uh, get, after getting to know you uh, this last month, um, I've learned that you got a degree in voice performance um, at CCM and uh, you are now living in Germany and you're not working as you had initially studied as in, in opera. You're doing all sorts of other musical projects. Um, I'd really love to hear that transformation and hear how that came about. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, long story, short story. So there was always kind of, I always had kind of an inkling that perhaps opera or purely opera wasn't my ultimate path. Um, even when I graduated from high school, I was vacillating between uh, three degree choices. I either wanted to do vocal performance, which is what I ended up doing, um, or study composition at the conservatory so that I could write music for myself. Or uh, the third option was to go more into the uh, direction of holistic stuff and health and healing and start studying like massage therapy and going to more like the healing and shamanic path. Um, so I ended up choosing the path of the uh, vocal performance. I started at um, uh, San Jose State University for my undergrad and then I went to CCM for masters. And as many singers um, in the States and actually globally end up doing is they come to Germany for an opera career because uh, there's just a lot more opera houses here. Um, but I kind of figured out pretty quickly that I wanted to be working on my own music. Um, it was kind of like a process with many kind of reasons and influences going into the decision. Um, a, a big driving factor um, was that I, I had this creative impulse and I really wanted to make my own music. I was always interested in, in other musical art forms um, besides opera. And I liked singing other styles other than opera as well. Um, and then there was this other piece where um, it wasn't cool with me that I spend all this money, time, energy, 
love, blood, sweat, and tears. I spend all of that energy training my voice, getting my voice together, getting a, a degree, you know, learning the languages, learning the musical style, studying the history, just, you know, everything that you do when you're a conservatory student and learning, you know, getting a degree in music. And that then at the end of my journey, a director or a conductor uh, or an ensemble leader can sit there and say, no, we don't want you. And for me, that's absolutely unacceptable because I didn't spend my life energy choosing to do the thing that I love for then somebody to say, I can't do it at the end of the day. No way. So, um, and I, I mean, I, I had okay luck when I started, uh, when I got here, you know, it was mostly like, yeah, nice voice, but your German is really crappy. So you're going to have to learn the language a little bit better. And, you know, because of my, my voice type, I would have been doing a lot of, uh, of like spoken dialogue, a lot of Mozart type of stuff um, and uh, operetta. So um, that was kind of a hurdle in the way at this point, it doesn't make a difference because I speak German. <laughs> my German's not weird anymore. Well, it's a little weird, but um, it's about as good as it's going to get. The, as I make my pesto, um, I wanted to ask you a follow up question. Um, the, when did you start becoming interested in music outside of classical music? So I was actually always interested in other musical styles. As I was growing up, um, I, I had interest in R&B and pop and hip hop and, you know, alternative. Um, my dad was a classical pianist, so I was exposed to a lot of classical music. Um, but then my mom was like a big Santana sting, you know, uh, Fleetwood Mac, Johnny Mitchell fan, so I kind of had influences from a lot of different musical styles. Um, but actually, when we were talking earlier, it kind of reminded me of this time in my life when I was when I was young, mid-teens, before I started studying voice when I was 15. Um, I actually wanted to be a pop singer, um, and I wanted to go down that path. It was kind of like my passion. Uh, however, at that time, this was like the height of like Britney, uh, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and um, um, there was very, very little wiggle room as far as physicality and how you looked. And I did not in any way, shape, or form fit the beauty standard of like teen pop stars at the time. And so I essentially wrote, wrote off my dream of being a pop singer and said, okay, well, if I'm not going to fit into the mold of being a pop singer, then I'm going to study classical music and at the very least study the highest form of this music. Um, you know, it's kind of like a, a proverbial, you know, like F you to the, to the industry. Well, if I can't do pop, then I'm going to learn opera. Um, and, you know, I'm glad that I, I went on down that path because I really value my classical education. But... Um, thinking back on it, you know, at my age now and thinking about having some life experience, seeing what can happen in life if you're focused on, on, on your path and kind of don't let so many external factors like make you off your balance. And it's, it's actually really sad because I think that, um, you know, the world has changed a lot in the last 25, 30 years since, uh, um, you know, Britney of 20, 25, 30 years since Britney was big, um, and body positivity is a thing now. Um, there are people that are represented in pop music of completely varying physicalities, um, body types, uh, ethnicities, um, gender spectrum, and so I think that if I had been a teenager with today's acceptance of different ways of being, I probably would have followed my path into the music that I'm making now 25 years ago, but that wasn't the time, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I can imagine uh, having that happen. And, and, and girls at that, at that age, it, it's so, there's so much pressure. Uh, so I think that um, I'm, I'm really happy that you were able to come back and, and, and rediscover or, you know, this thing that you're passionate about. Yeah, there's this, um, thank you. And there's this, there's this thing that I think you realize, for most of us who are over 30, you just start to realize, like, God damn it, life is so short. People, you know, the people around you are having kids. Some are dead already, you know, not a lot. But it, the life, the phases of life are happening very, very 
uh, vibrantly around you and you're like, you know, all right, I veered from this path. I veered from the wishes of my heart. I veered from the calling of my soul and, and it took me on a detour, but it didn't extinguish that desire and that longing. And it didn't distinguish that drive and, 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 and sense of inner purpose and direction. All it did was it delayed it into a later date. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, so, you know, I, 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 I'm glad that I went through it, but I, I wish that I had the wisdom that I have now in my, you know, late thirties to be like, damn, like all that stuff were external fears. It was based in a lack of self-esteem, um, you know, social programming and all that stuff. And I wish that I had had a little bit more conviction uh, kind of rooted in my authentic self, but what teenager doesn't wish that they were more convicted within themselves. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Uh, well, now let's just start cooking our meat. Um, I have to ask you, uh, what advice do you have for people who are, you know, just about to graduate or just graduating um, and are maybe not sure about whether classical music is, you know, the path in music within music that they want to stick in? Okay, so what I would suggest is um, start listening to your inner voice sooner than later. You already know what you want to be doing. You already know what it is that you want to be doing. You already know what music that you prefer. You already know what you like to listen to. You already know what deep down inside you really, really, really like to be performing and making. So just take that step and let yourself have some courage and listen to that inner voice. Um, and then follow the path of the thing that you love. So just launch into it, start, you know, the training that you have right now is amazing and it's gonna help you a lot along the way. Um, Cause most people that are in, not most people, that's a huge generalization. Many people who are in the other musical genres, particularly um, pop and rock and that stuff, they don't have um, the classical training. So um, there are benefits and, uh, you know, there are pros and cons to that, but um, having the musical background, you in some ways are starting with a leg up um, because you understand a lot more about music and how music can work. On the other hand, um, as a classical musician, sometimes you tend to be a little bit less flexible um, we do things like prepared and we, we show up and have like the piece, you know, learned and practiced and a lot of times in the other styles of music it's more open and relaxed and you have more room for improvisation and stuff. So just be aware that there will be things that you will have to learn. Um, you know, it's a new musical style, so it's going to, of course, then be, um, you know, additional work to learn the rules and the, the, the conventions of the style. Um, so just listen to yourself. Yeah, I think that that's some, I think that's really great advice. I, I, even me, like, even though I'm still in classical music, um, I, you know, I've, I've been learning that everything that I thought I knew about the music world was wrong and that there's so much more flexibility than people think there are. Um, the, there's so many more options out there than than what maybe you thought you learned when you were 18. Yes, yes. that's a really, really important point is that you are not limited by your classical training. And most of us, when we leave our training, we feel like we're limited. We feel like, okay, I learned that thing. I'm, I'm a trombonist. I'm, I only learned composition. I didn't learn performance or I only learned, uh, you know, um, uh, pedagogy. I didn't learn performance. Or I, oh my God, I'm a singer. I only learned how to sing. I can't like play the piano and or the guitar or whatever. Um, you know, the end of your education is just the. It's a signpost and it's the end of a phase, but it's not the end of your learning. 
And I think if people grasp that from the beginning, it's a lot easier because you, you enter that next phase of your life um, understanding that you're still going to be learning and still going to be developing and you're not finished just because you have a degree from a university or from a conservatory. I think that's a really great point. Um, and I think that your experience is um, switching uh, from classical music to what you're doing now is uh, really important and, that, and that's a really valuable experience. Um, thanks for sharing. I have one, one other thought to that and that is that um, when you're switching musical genres, it's important to be kind of neutral and like don't get the ego involved when you're looking at the skills that you need to now learn and supplement. Like for instance, for me as a classical, a classical musician first, um, sometimes I get super, super uncomfortable with like improvisation situations. And, you know, it's easy to be like, oh, like I'm never going to learn, I'm a shitty musician or I didn't learn enough. No, that's all crap. But the truth is that there is going to be a set of skills that you will then need to learn new or you'll need to supplement. Um, and just being super pragmatic about those things. They're like, okay, I, I, I learned this XYZ classical. Now I'm not so strong in these things. And I have to learn that. The other thing that was a shock to me, and it's really, really hard at first, is when you're an expert at that one thing that you learn. So like as a classical singer, I was, I'm already at a professional level as a classical singer. But then when you go and you start to do that new thing, you are starting at the beginning. You have the understanding of a developed musician, but your motor skills, the technical skills are more at the beginning. Because you're already a musician, it's like languages. When you speak two or three languages, learning more languages is easy. Same with the music. When you're acquiring a new skill, it goes faster. But that initial discomfort of, of being really good at one instrument and really shitty at another instrument and having that, that like cognitive dissonance is really, really hard. Just be aware that's going to happen. And it's okay. And just work through it the same way you work through learning your your primary instrument. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> I'm that uh, just be aware when you're when you're doing your solo jiggles because you said you haven't done them before, right? What, what was that? Um, haven't done solo before, right? No, I haven't. They they cook over. What do you and mean? There's like a spark, spark that comes up that like boils over. So just be aware of that. Oh, okay. I think popcorn is like a hidden gem. Who knew that you could make a, that you could make a Parmesan crusted chicken with popcorn? Oh my God, I mean, amazing. I altered my salmon recipe a little bit. Um, I had to change it because uh, I couldn't get like a nice breaded effect. And I also left the curry out of the salmon. So I only have curry now in the kale. And the salmon is the Turkish fish spice with um, some sesame oil, some soy sauce, uh, the sesame seeds, and the um, pomegranate reduction. And then actually, I'm going to keep the silver noodles super, super simple, just sesame oil and maybe a little soy sauce. Nice. Totally fine. For those of you who want to try this amazing recipe later. Okay, so our, our food's all done. I'm gonna we're gonna, let's start the plate. Um, I this has been such a great conversation. Um, I want to hear about what what you're working on right now and where people can find out more about it. Oh yes, I'm glad to tell you. So um, since last year, I've been working under the artist name Yoko Kanoa. And I released uh, an EP last year, two uh, acoustic singles um, this year, and then I just released another electronic single um, just a week ago, two weeks ago now. Um, and essentially what I'm doing now is I'm producing and writing my own music. So I'm making fully committed balls to the wall, Nicole's making her music, or the bus. 
That's so exciting. I'm I'm so excited to go dig in and, and uh, learn more about this. Um, where's the best place for people to find out more about it? Uh, uh, my music is available actually on all digital platforms. If you want to buy it, it's available on Bandcamp. Um, but I'm also on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, Apple Music, um, YouTube Music. Uh, I have a YouTube channel as well that has my music videos and lyrics videos. And of course, uh, you know, anywhere where social media is social media. So uh, primarily Facebook and um, uh, Instagram. However, I am also uh, have a LinkedIn profile and a LinkedIn professional uh, company page for the music for Yoga Kanoa. So basically, wherever you are, I am, except I'm not on the chart yet. I feel like I, I missed the boat on that one. The blank. Okay, um, why don't we dig in? This is so exciting. Do it. Oh, dude. Mm. This is so delicious. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, everybody. This is probably my favorite of everything I've made so far on this show. Um, not that your not that your recipes weren't great, but this was just like it's so there's so much energy in this dish because I didn't use any recipes. I just threw things threw this together using ingredients some ingredients that I've never used before. Um, I've never mm -hmm. used soba noodles. I've never used popcorn outside of just popcorn. And uh, you know, it was just so much fun um, to create this. Um, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you make this, please share pictures. Let me know, tag me, I wanna know. Share the video, it really helps a lot. I, I promise you that's the thing that helps more than anything um, if you like this show. Um, go check out Nicole's stuff. It's, it's really, really great and she's a delight. So like, go help good people. Um, thanks for being part of the show, Nicole. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. <laughs>